Cisco Certified Network Associate Day 41. Welcome back everyone. I'm Imran Rafai, your trainer for this entire series. Today we're going to look at two important topics. Uh, that will be DHCP snooping and default native VLAN. Without wasting much time, let's get straight into today's class. And like always, before we move ahead, uh, please click on that subscribe button and click on that bell icon to be notified when we add a new video. Also, please don't forget to hit on that like button, which would make us very, very happy. Do you want to improve your memory? Then click on that button on the top right hand corner now to visit our other channel where our first video is how to improve your memory. I recommend you to subscribe to that channel because that is a channel where we will be having a lot of self-improvement videos. Uh, so go subscribe to that channel right away and like that video. Uh, our social media contacts, on the left you would find Networking Consultant, Networking Inc and Networking Inc for Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. On the right, my personal social media contacts. If you want my email, that's imran.rafai at nwking.org. So what are we going to look at today? Today, we would be continuing from 1.7 that we did last time. We looked at 1.7 A802.1x, which is one of the uh, threat on uh, access layer, right? Like you know 1.7 talks about three access layer threats and how to mitigate that. So we discussed 802.1x last video. We would be dealing with DHCP snooping and non-default native VLAN in this video. So before we talk about DHCP snooping, we need to revisit some of the topics that we did in our old video. So we, we discussed about DHCP, so I would request all of you to go back. I think it is day six. Uh, and then also day 24, I believe, where we uh, had uh, discussed about DHCP. So day six is important where we discussed about DHCP assignment of IP addresses, the, the messages that they exchange, like the, the DORA process. So watch that video. If you don't remember that, uh, watch day six and come back here. So in a typical scenario, an end user comes to the network. So when it gets connected to the network, it sends a discover message so it's a broadcast message that sends uh, onto the network a discover message it's a broadcast everybody in the network listens to that right so typically what it would do is once it reaches uh, if there is a DHCP server in the network it would respond but if there's no DHCP server if there's a DHCP relay in this case this router acts as a relay uh, so this router will forward that to the DHCP server, DHCP server would then send an offer with an IP address, then this device would communicate with that server and then that server would finally assign, acknowledge that they have accepted that IP address, right? So this is the normal process, how it would be. So if this real DHCP server signs an IP address, it would have an IP address in that range, let's say 192.168.10.10, right? And it would have the gateway to dot one, right? This would be the ideal gateway because this is exit point for this network and then they can access the internet or other networks through this device, right? That's the normal way, what should be happening. But let's assume uh, in the network, there is a rogue uh, attacker who has actually installed a DHCP server in, on, on their computer. So when an end user comes in, like last time, and sends a broadcast message, of course, the relay agent would forward that to the DHCP server, but this DHCP server, the rogue DHCP server, which is already in the network, would listen to that broadcast and send an offer, right? So a DHCP discover, the DHCP offer would come from here, and because he's already received an offer, the end user would accept it, right? It would say, okay, I accept it. Uh, so it'll request for that IP address and then they would send. So the, the DORA process, D-O-R-A. D, discover message. O is offer message. R is request message. A is acknowledgement, right? So this would happen here and this end, end user device would get an IP address. So what an attacker would do is he will give him genuine IP address. So it will be like 192.168.10.2, which is part of this network. But if you see, the gateway would be .95, which is nothing but this device's IP address. So what it would do, let me just raise the board. Uh, 
what it would do is all traffic henceforth from the end user going to the internet would first come here because according to the IP address given he is the gateway so he would send all traffic to the gateway and the attacker's PC what it would do in turn is take the traffic and send it to the real gateway and uh, for the end user there is no difference because he can access the internet so they're trying to reach the internet they can reach the internet but the only problem is the traffic is going through an intermediate device so return traffic would also come like that it would go to this device and then it would go here right this is called man in the middle attack right because every traffic that is going through the network for this computer is going through the attacker's computer and he can actually read everything right so this is man in the middle attack so this is one of the attacks that can happen on a dhcp network right the second type of attack that happens is called denial of service attack so in this case what happens is uh, the dhcp server now he's not a server so he's an attacker what he would do is he would send a discover uh, packet right so uh, the real DHCP server because he gets a discover message he would send an offer right so he would accept it so he'd request for uh, that uh, IP address and then he would send an ACK right so this he does once after maybe about two minutes he would again request it two three so he will continuously keep asking for a new IP address now in typical world in DHCP when it leases an IP address uh, when, when an administrator configure you configure a, a pool right and a pool typically you would have 100 IP address 200 IP address depending on how the con how the administrator is configured you would have 100 200 IP addresses so the attacker what they would do by doing a denial of service attack is it'll keep requesting for an IP address so every time they lease an IP address that IP address is valid for one day typically it's one day but you could change that lease time so one day that's 24 hours so they would lease IP address with dot one dot two dot three dot four and it would exhaust that pool so once the pool is exhausted he wouldn't have another IP address to give to a new client so if there's another genuine user comes in they will not have this server will not have a free IP address it would assume that all the IP addresses given are leased and that lease expiry is 24 hours later right so this is a way of doing denial of service attack where they would exhaust or they would starve the DHCP server of any usable IP address. So these are the problems with DHCP. Now how do we uh, get out of this? How do we mitigate this attack or these types of attacks? We use a concept called DHCP snooping. So what is DHCP snooping? DHCP snooping for all practical purpose is like an ACL, right? But only thing is DHCP snooping is a layer two function, right? So it works only on a switch. Um, to understand DHCP snooping, we need to understand two types of ports. One is called a trusted port and another is called as an untrusted port. So what's the difference between trusted port and untrusted port? On a trusted port, every type of DHCP message would be let through, right? Whatever message, DHCP message would be let through because it's trusted port. On an untrusted port, we will not, right? DHCP snooping logic will not let any messages that is not supposed to come from end users, right? So basically, if you remember the DORA process, in DORA process, D is from the client, O is from the server, right? So D goes from client to server. O, which is offer comes from server to client. Then R goes from client to server. A comes from server to client, right? So from untrusted ports, these messages D and R would be accepted. But if there is a O, offer or acknowledge coming from untrusted port, that will get blocked it they will not send through right so basically trusted and untrusted that's what it does when you enable dhcp snooping by default all the ports of the switch is untrusted right it goes into untrusted so the minute you can enable dhcp snooping either globally on all the ports or you can go enable dhcp snooping via vlan right so if, if there are five ports in that vlan 
like 10 and if you enable DHCP snooping for VLAN 10 those 10 ports would be uh, untrusted so you the DHCP snooping only is going to work on those uh, 5 or 10 ports whatever uh, ports are there part of that VLAN right now like I said the minute you enable DHCP snooping all the ports are untrusted now as an administrator what you would do is you would go and configure all the ports that's connected to devices like a server right a server not DHCP any type of server you would make that port as trusted or maybe if it's connected to another switch that is also a trusted port or if it's connected to a router that is also a trusted port right any port that's connected to an end user right any end user device that has to be untrusted if it's connected to a wireless access point that also has to be an untrusted port because wireless access point in turn is connected to end user devices right so anything coming from an end user device has to be untrusted so if it's an end user device obviously e even if let's say for instance now this guy is an attacker right now if he is trying to send any server messages like an offer pack offer message or an acknowledgement message this will get blocked right that type of traffic will not go through a dhcp snooping's untrusted port right this is how dhcp snooping prevents uh, uh, DHCP attacks that we looked at earlier right uh, also also DHCP snooping would keep a binding table a binding table is whenever a DHCP server assigns an IP address it is going to look at the MAC address and IP address right so uh, we, we spoke about uh, denial of service attack right so we know that certain mac address asked for an ip address and that was assigned now if the same device same mac address device asks for an ip address again it would know that this is an abnormality because this mac address just recently asked for an ip address and an ip address was assigned why is it asking for another ip address right that is a typical problem where attacker is trying to get more than one it's trying to do a denial of service attack so that will immediately be prevented so that traffic that request would be prevented also it knows which port number has which IP address because it's keeping this binding table so this binding table also makes helps them make a decision of uh, what MAC address is using what IP address right so this is how DHCP snooping prevents DHCP attacks that we discussed uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is non-default native VLAN. Now, VLAN is a topic that we discussed many, many times. I think we we dedicated four videos for uh, VLAN. So, if you do, if you still have confusion about VLANs, I would request you to go back and watch those videos. I think it's 11, 12, day 11, day 12, day 13, and day 34 or 24. I don't know, but go go back and watch those videos. Um, now what we're going to talk about today is non-default native VLAN. Now we know what a native VLAN is, right? A default native VLAN. Uh, by default, native VLAN in a Cisco switch is VLAN 1, right? VLAN 1 is uh, the native VLAN. That's default native VLAN. Now there is a type of attack called as a VLAN hopping attack. Now if you, if you know uh, how switches tag packets, if the let's say for instance this is vlan 1 right and and now the default native vlan is 1 right so this is def vlan 1 and this is vlan 10 right now typically when traffic comes from here right this switch knows that this port is part of vlan 1 right so when when this traffic goes out onto a trunk the switch looks at that traffic and says okay you're a vlan 1 traffic that's my native vlan so i'm not going to tag you so it will go untagged that traffic will go untagged to switch 2 right this is switch 2 and this is switch 1 right i'm gonna put this now when this switch 2 receives that packet he says okay you're coming untagged that means you are vlan 1 which is my native vlan and hence you can't go into vlan 2 10 traffic right so i can't i can't send that traffic to this computer right that's that's how it should be that's that's the way it has to be there right so vlan 1 traffic should not be able to go to vlan 10 right now let's assume the same thing what there's this is an attacker now 
Now what an attacker does is he creates a packet with a VLAN tag of VLAN 10. Now we this is VLAN 10 like we discussed earlier, VLAN 10 and this is VLAN 1, right? Now this attacker creates a, a frame with a VLAN 10 tag on it, right? So this is a frame and then there is a VLAN 10 tag on it, right? And he sends that on uh, to the switch. Now the switch gets that uh, traffic. Uh, I mean, if you know how VLAN works, when it comes into the switch, the switch doesn't do anything to the, the, the frame. Whatever frame it receives, it doesn't touch anything. It touches only at the trunk. When it's non-default non native VLAN traffic, it tags it. So if at all it is the default native VLAN tag, it doesn't tag anything. It just sends that same traffic out onto uh, switch 2. Now when switch 2 receives that, this frame has a tag in it, right? Switch 1 did not do this tag. This tag was done by the attacker. So switch 2 does not know that. Switch 2 sees that there is a tag and the tag is VLAN 10. So it takes a traffic and it sends here to this computer, right? That traffic goes through because what just happened is we did a VLAN hopping attack. This is something that should not happen. How do we mitigate this? First thing is create a random VLAN, right? Just a random VLAN, 999, 666, 777, whatever you want. Create a random VLAN and that VLAN should not be used at all. It's just a dummy VLAN we keep so that we don't become a victim to VLAN hopping attacks. So just create a random VLAN. Don't assign any ports to that VLAN and go to each of these trunks, right? And change the native VLAN to that. Let's say for instance 666. Um, change the native VLAN to 666 on both sides. If you don't change on both sides, you will have a CDP VLAN, a native VLAN mismatch error, right? So go to both sides of the trunk and all the trunks and make the native VLAN as 666. And make sure that you don't assign any ports to this VLAN. So it will be a dead VLAN. So even if somebody wants to do a VLAN hopping attack, it will not work because the native VLAN is in a VLAN that is not part of any of the ports in your switch, right? So this is how you mitigate a VLAN hopping attack. And that is why a non-default native VLAN should be assigned to your device. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll be back very, very soon. Now, if you look at uh, the exam topics, you see that from the next video, we would be getting into the most sought after part of our ICND 2 series, which is OSPF and EIGRP routing. So and from next video, we would be starting routing. Stay tuned, guys. We will be back very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.